Bless God at all times. We come acknowledging that we share on this land that we are a part of. As we come to worship, we believe that our relationship with the Creator, the land, the people, especially the First Peoples, the plants and the animals are sacred. As we come from St. Together, as we come from St. Andrew's Presbyterian and Collier Street United Communities, we are here to honor these sacred relationships as we worship God. We are one in the Spirit. We light our worship candle. Out of the depths, the poor cry to us for relief. Out of the depths, the displaced cry to us for shelter. Out of the depths, the hungry cry to us for food. Out of the depths, the spiritual needs cry out to God. This light that we are sharing in today comes not to quell us, but to hear and to remind us of our cries, to meet us as we cry to God. As the light is lit, we know that through our prayers, our words, our silence, our wandering with God, God says, God is with us. We light our worship candle. It is good to see you. It is good to be seen by those that are here in person and those who are joining us online. Welcome to worship at Collier Street United Church with both the peoples of Collier and St. Andrew's Presbyterian as we have so united our efforts in worship uh, this summer. We're glad that you have joined us today. We do have the sacrament of baptism to share in our service and uh, hope that uh, through this sacrament and other elements of the worship, we may be spiritually nourished, encouraged, and transformed as we walk a path of love and justice in the world. And so uh, we are eager to receive any gifts that you have brought with you today in an offering. You can place it in one of the plates that are in the sanctuary, uh, either on the side or as you leave. And you're also welcome to use electronically. There's a card in the pew. Uh, don't know if we have it on the screen. There's a card in the pew that, there it is. If you want to give us electronically, you can just uh, uh, scan the QR code and you can uh, offer a donation to uh, the uh, work and ministry of Collier Street uh, United uh, Church. We accept uh, gifts by a par, post dated checks. Uh, gifts, uh, securities, uh, credit cards, cash, and e-transfer. So you are welcome to, to share in our offering our gifts, offering us gifts today. And so we can turn to each other, we can greet each other with a smile, with a wave, with an embrace, and say, hello, how are you, how did you? There are some notices that are on the PowerPoint. Oh, thank you. Uh, we are, uh, uh, we'll go through those. The St. Andrew's Church office will be closed August the 12th to the uh, 23rd, that is tomorrow, right, Joanne? Uh, so uh, if you are in need of the church office, then there are other ways that you get in touch with the staff, but 
they are not available during this time. Uh, I think Joanne is away from us as well uh, for a little break over the next two weeks. And so uh, if you want to catch her today, you're, it's best to do so as she will be away for the next two weeks. And you get to spend the time with me. Yay! Yeah. There was a yay! <laughs> You see, I was at the cottage this week and there were lots of children, so I'm getting to the yay, um, especially a little baby was there. So, um, yes, so Joanne is going to be away for two weeks and there's going to be a break uh, for the Friday morning coffee time on the 16th and the 23rd. Okay. The story of Moses continues. It's part three and you're welcome to that on the 29th. There is a joint barbecue after uh, worship this morning. You are all welcome to join us. It's going to be uh, in M5, and I know there's lots of preparation that's being made for uh, today, so don't go away and allow all of us to have two or three uh, hamburgers, you know? Uh, so uh, please, you are welcome to, to join us, and I know that even if you have a feast prepared for uh, uh, the, the after baptism, uh, you can just munch on something and then go get the rest later. There are some birthdays uh, that's happening uh, this, this week. Uh, Dick's birthday is on the 14th, and Bruce's birthday is on the 13th. And you wonder why I didn't go the other way, eh? Bruce and then Dick. Bruce is at the back. Wait, wait for them, Bruce. No, that's not Bruce. That's, that's Bruce, but it's not Bruce Baird. That's a different Bruce. I was like, okay. Uh, that's not the Bruce. But uh, Dick's here. Dick can wave. Yep, there's Dick. His birthday is coming. So happy birthday, Dick. And may God's blessing continue to uh, descend upon you. And as you prepare to go to the cottage as well, may you be renourished. I know because I am going. That's right. I am going. Okay, so what's next? Oh, we talked about uh, after church. It's more than drinks and biscuits after church, so join us. So how are you today? Bless God always. We will bless and thank God at this morning service of worship. Share with me in the words for the gathered. You're welcome to say the bold print. Out of the depths we cry to God. God will hear the voice of our cries. Out of our despair we come seeking help. God is our help in ages past and our hope in years to come. Into hope Christ, Christ brings us. I and God in Christ to show us steadfast love and to welcome and renew us here and always. We sing to God's honor and glory, 235 in voices united, O worship the King. We stand as we are able.
Please be seated. I invite you to bend your hearts and spirits as I lead you in prayer. Let us pray. Holy One, we come to worship conscious of your great love for us and of our failings in following you. Deal gently with us, O Eternal One, and as we cry to you out of the depths of our chaos, we know that you hear us. Bless us as we meet you, risen and ascended Jesus, and let your ears be attentive to the voice of our supplications. If you should mark our iniquities, who should stand? But with you, there is forgiveness so that we may revere you as we lift our spirits and we become more transformed into your love and your likeness. Inspire us, O most Holy Spirit, to put away all falsehood and to speak the truth, even the truth to power, for our lives to reflect your love and that our chaos may be transformed into your care and that you may reorder our ways into calm and peace. Turn away not from us in this moment, but look towards us as we look towards you. Stretch your hands towards us as we kneel our heads before you. Bend your spirits into our hearts as we bow our hearts into your way. In your holy and precious way, may we be touched changed, renewed, may be made whole. Through Jesus the Christ we pray. Amen. Hear then the words of renewal. You will nourish us, O God, and if we are willing to cry out to you the bread of life, we hear on the screen, the hymn, Out of the Depths, O God, we call to you. On behalf of Collier Street United Church Congregation, I present John Patrick Capucci Wiggins for initiation into the body of Christ through baptism. Siblings in the faith, let us celebrate God's gift of grace given to us in the sacrament of baptism. There is one body and one spirit, and we have one hope in Christ. There is one God, creator of us all, and out of the water of baptism we rise with new life, forgiven, renewed, and one with Christ, members of Christ's body. To you, the parents and Godparents, I, share, I ask these questions, and also to you, the congregation. Do you believe in God, Christ, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit? Do you promise by God's grace to nurture John in the Christian faith and encourage him to express that faith within the worship and fellowship of the church? We do. To the Godparents, a special question. Do you promise by God's grace to pray and care for John and support his family as you are able? To the congregation, if you agree with the question, I invite you to stand. Do you welcome John into the family of God and promise to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and our risen judge and our hope. You stand and say, we do. And let us pray, remain standing. Gracious and Holy One, we bless you for the gift of life and within it the gift of water. Over its unshaped promise, your spirit hovered at creation by water comes the growth of the earth, and through water 
you led the children of Israel to freedom. In the waters of the Jordan, your chosen one, Jesus, was baptized. Now may your spirit be upon us in what we do, that this water may be a sign of all of new life in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. What is the name of this child? John. John. Patrick. Okay. This water. No, just okay. Just one minute. No, not yet. I'm just going to pour. This water to be used, Creator, in the name of the Christ and in the name of the Holy Spirit. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God lift up the light of God's countenance upon you and grant you love, grace, peace, and hope this day and forevermore. I'll take him. As we sing Ali Ali, I will show you this wonderful gift. We sing Ali Ali. Just leave my mic on. Here is John. Let us welcome him into the family of God. Say hi. Say hi. Say hello. Say hi. Say hello. Say hi. Say hello. Say hi. Say hello. Alleluia, alleluia. Say hi. Say hi. Say hello. Say good morning. Say welcome. Hey, say hello. Say good morning. Say hi. Say good morning. Say hello. Say good morning. Good morning. Say hello. Say good morning. Say hi. Alle, alle, alleluia. Say hi. Say good morning. Say, say morning. Say hi. Good morning. Say hi. Say hi. Yes. Halle, halle, halle. Alleluia. Halle, halle, halle. Alleluia. Stop. Just one minute. It's my only chance. Come on. Let's go again. Halle, halle. Ah, halle, halle, halle. Halle, John, this is your family. That when you cry out of your depths, you will know that they are yours. You no longer have mommy and daddy. You no longer have your godparents, your grandparents, but you have all of us to be there with you and for you. Receive this child blessed and baptized in the name of the Creator, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit. 
And we have So I have a rosary to bless, and then we will share some gifts with you. In the name of the Creator, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, bless this rosary that it may continue to remind John of this day, and that your spirit journeys with him, that the mother of Mary, the mother Mary, continues to be a companion as she was the companion for Jesus. And so may this symbol be a blessing to him and to his spiritual journey. Now and forever we pray. Amen. Amen. Receive this gift blessed by God for the continued journey. Receive this candle to show that the light of Christ lives in John. Look at that smile. Receive the certificate that tells of this day and the blanket that demonstrates the different ways and colors and shapes and sizes of our community, a gift from us to you, knitted with our love, for you to know that the love of God will always be with you from us. Look at the smile. Gee. Let's receive him again. Thank you. We will bless God when God builds, holds us fast in the storms of life. Our words from scripture today come from Psalm 130 from the Inclusive Bible. Let us listen to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Out of the depths I cry to you, God. God, hear my voice. Let us hear your ears be attentive. My cries for mercy. If you kept track of our sins, God, who could stand before you? But with you is forgiveness, and for this we revere you. So I wait for you, God, my soul waits, and in your word I place my trust. My soul longs for you, God, more than the sentinels long for the dawn, more than the sentinels long for the dawn. Israel. Put your hope in God, for with God is abundant love and the fullness of deliverance. God is with Israel, all its failings. This is life-giving word for the people of God. Thanks be to God. A little boy was kneeling beside his bed, and his mother and grandmother softly saying, his mother and grandmother were close by. And so he began to pray, Dear God, please bless Mommy, Daddy, and all the family, and please give me a good night's sleep. And suddenly he shouted, and don't forget to give me a bicycle for my birthday. There is no need to shout, says Grandma. God is not deaf. He turns to her and he says, no, God isn't, but you are. <laughs> Remember, it's a joke. Let us pray. May your words be my words. May our thoughts be your thoughts, and may this moment we may hear you, and in this moment we may be transformed by your words. Through Christ's name we pray. Amen. One great value of the Psalms is that it tells a story about something that we tend not to express. 
For most of the psalm, they speak to us. The psalm speaks for us. They enable us to articulate that which we tend to bring before God and even at our deepest moments. They tell a story of our greatest fears, our greatest lingerings, our longing hearts, our troubled souls. They tell a story of that which we often don't want to share. It was Psalm 23, Psalm 22 rather, that Jesus prayed in his deepest moment on the cross. And what were the words? My God, my God, you know the rest of it? Why have you forsaken me? And perhaps Jesus learned this when he was going to Sabbath school. Very often when I I'm speaking to families walking through grief, and I ask them, what scripture passage would you like us to use at the celebration of life or the funeral? One of the favorite ones that come up is Psalm 23. And the words that come from the Psalms are, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort us. They tell the story about God being the shepherd, which Joanne mentioned a few weeks ago. This Psalm 130 is important and was important to a lot of people in the church. Martin Luther, the great reformer, felt that this was one of the most powerful Psalms ever written, quite perhaps his favorite. You see, John Wesley as well, in this congregation Methodist tradition, John Wesley also thought this was a good psalm. This was a psalm he heard in the St. Paul's Cathedral as he listened to the choir sing, Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord, Lord, hear my cry. As we come to this time of worship and on this day in the summer, we turn our focus to Psalm 130 because we tend to not want to pray these psalms. When buried in the deepest sea or down in the valley, we tend to want to pull our way from God. When all have put, we have put together and all falls apart, we tend not to want to be in the presence of God. But this psalm, Psalm 130, says that when you are down, it is best to fall in the presence of God. Because in this Psalm 130, it says, God is with us. That when we cry out to God, no matter what we cry, no matter the pain and the aches and the disappointments and distraction, the disturbance and the disillusion, the dislocation and the disarmament, whatever it is, God is with us. It is Eugene Peterson who translates that God is there to help us when the bottom falls out. When the bottom of life falls out, God is there to help us. And this is what the Psalm 130 is declaring. No matter the diagnosis, no matter the disappointment. A couple of weeks ago, one of my friends called me and said, you know, I am being investigated. I said, what did you do now? They're investigating me for an assault, a sexual assault. And I said, well, that's serious. And we talked through it, and he said, but Hewitt, I feel so disappointed because I didn't know this day would ever come that people would investigate me for this. And I said, so how do you think about 
what the, the lady feels. And he says, I can imagine how she feels. And I said, you know what is interesting? Her feeling is held by God, but so is your feeling. The long and short of it, the matter is, the investigation went on, and he was found not to be, to be guilty. But I said to him, learn your lesson. One, be careful of what you do when you're in the company of uh, 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 certain people, and in particular, the opposite sex. And also, just know that no matter what, the God that you know and the God that loves you is going to be there with you. Now, I'm not saying that God is going to hug up the wrongs that we do. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm simply saying that in the deepest moments when he felt the need to call his friend, not only the friend who is a minister, but his friend, he knew that somehow he needed to be reassured that no matter what, God is there. Maybe you are walking through some diagnosis. Maybe you are walking through some disappointment. Maybe the relationship that you are in is, is not at its best with your children and with your partner or even with the church that you are a part of. I recently was involved in another interview with, which had to do with a, a, a ministry personnel that was just having a difficult time with a community of faith. And the community of faith was having a difficult time with the ministry personnel. No matter what is happening, and I remember this Psalm 130 came to mind and I read it. And at that moment, it never brought any sense of relief or release. But I wanted the ministry personnel to hear the words that in the deepest moments of our lives, when we cry out to God, the God who is creator, redeemer, sustainer, maker, redeemer, I said that already, you know I'm not going off my notes now. <laughs> the God who loves us is there with us. So I want to talk about two persons in scripture who cried out to God. You know the story of Jonah, right? Come on, we learned it in Sunday school. I know that's way, way, way back for some of us, but we still have a little bit of memory of that. You see, Sharon is outside, so I can give myself trouble. Oh, there she comes. Okay, I'm back in. So God called Jonah to go to Nineveh. He hopped on a boat, headed to Tarshish, Tarshish. And God called Jonah east, Jonah went west. God called Jonah to preach, and Jonah went to sleep. And when the sailors searched for someone responsible for the storm at the sea, the lot fell on Jonah, the Hebrew on board, who was running from God. Dumped into the deep waters, swallowed by a fish, Jonah cries out to God. Hear the words, it is my great distress in, in my great distress, I called to God, and God answered me. From the depths of my grave, I cried for help, and you heard my cry. And while the current swirling about, we see weeds wrapping around him, out of the depths of the sea, Jonah remembers God. Last week I was at the cottage with my godsons and uh, their parents and they were coming from, they had come from the States and they had never experienced uh, uh, certain activities at the cottage that Ian and I uh, uh, like and enjoy, you know, the kayaking, the canoeing and so forth, well, and Dick and all this too. So anyways, we took, uh, he's about, one of them is nine and, and he decided to go skiing. They have the, the, ch the child one. And he had completed his, let me see your hands if you have gone skiing. Okay, because my hand is not going up, because I haven't gone. So anyways, he's gone skiing. It was his very first time, and he goes skiing. So he is, he is you know, when, when you're coming back from, the ski, from, from your ski, the boat 
doesn't take you right back into shore. It kind of just drops you off and you have to swim in. So the boat drops him off or he lets go of the, of the rope and he's down. And then he cries out, Daddy, uncle, I can't swim. So we had to say, no, you, yes, you can, paddle on. Out of his deepest moment of sinking, what does he do? He cries out. And isn't that with life sometimes? Who, we, who do we cry out to when life really gets messy and miserable? It's okay to cry out to our friends and family because they will help us. But it's also okay to cry out to the God who loves us, who knows us, who journeys with us, who will be there with us. No matter how we are sinking, God says, swim, swim, and he made it. He made it so much so that at, at when he got to the shore, he said, can I do that again? Jonah cries out to God out of his rebellion, and God hears. But I want to talk about someone else. I want to talk about Hannah. Hannah cries out to God out of her depths of being ridiculed and rejected. Do you know the story of Hannah? Yes? Okay. I can remind you. The story of Anna is a special story about a woman who struggles to, to, to give birth. She was having a struggle with infertility. In 1 Samuel 1 and 19, God remembered Hannah. So Hannah was married to Elkanah, who greatly loved her. She longed for a child, but was unable to conceive. She was mocked by the other wives, because, you know, those were the days that you had more than one wives. She was mocked and ridiculed. Her husband asked, Hannah, why are you weeping? Why are you not eating? Why are you so miserable, according to 1 Samuel 1 and verse 8? In her distress, what does Hannah do? Like my, my godson who cries out in the lake, Hannah cries out to God, pouring out her heart and soul in prayer. Hear the words, O God of hosts, if you look with pity on the hardship of your servant, if you remember me and do not forget, if you give your handmaid a male child, I will give him to you all the days of my life. She vowed that, and what happened? God heard her cry. God blessed her with a male child. And what did she do? She gave this male child to God. Who was the male child? Who was the male child? Samuel. Samuel. True, Hannah reminds us that no matter the toughness that happens in life, especially for women, who find it hard to conceive and have miscarriages and are faced with ridicule and rejection. And for those who have children that are special needs, no matter the reality we face, out of the depths we should cry out to God like Hannah. I didn't get permission to tell you a story about one of my family members, um, so I'm not going to tell you the story uh, by calling the name. But the gist of it is that this family member had a miscarriage, had a couple of miscarriages. And one day, she went to my sister to pray and ask for prayer. And uh, my sister offered prayer. And she was in her 50s, and you know, women in their 50s having conception and delivery is not the easiest thing, right? You ladies? Who, come on, you can tell me. I don't know anything about that. I'm just reading it and, and hearing the story, but it's not the easiest thing. But she got pregnant. And she tells the story of how God has given her a Samuel. She never named the child Samuel, but she tells the story of how God gives a Samuel. 
Psalm 130. Let me see your hands if you think it was David who wrote this psalm. You think it was David who wrote this psalm, 130? Oh, we have a nice... Okay, fine. But some people feel that this was a psalm written by Elkanah, or rather Hezekiah, not Elkanah. Elkanah was the husband of Hannah. It was Hezekiah who wrote this psalm. And Psalm 51 was written by David. And David said, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. For I know my transgressions, and my sins are ever before you. Psalm 130 reminds us to cry out to God who hears our cry. But I want to leave two things quite quickly with you. You know why God is with us in these moments when we cry out because of God's unfailing and unflinching hope. God has an unfailing and unflinching hope for you that no matter what you face, hope still is going on the rise. I want that to sink in. No matter what, hope still is on the rise. Whether it's personally, whether it's in the church. And that's why sometimes I don't worry too much about the numbers. Because I still feel that God acts in spite of. That's the unflinching hope that lives in me, that no matter what we go through, God still is on the move. This psalm is about a watchman waiting for, for the dawn. And we are like that watchman waiting for the, the newness to come. But guess what? God is already in the newness, says Psalm 130. For the psalmist knew that no matter the tiredness, the tiredness, no matter the loneliness, no matter the disappointment, no matter what, God is already in the newness. This unflinching, this, this unfailing hope. I, I wonder, I wonder, my friends and, and siblings in the faith, if, if you have that hope, I wonder. Because if you don't, you're at the right place. Because Psalm 130 says that hope is there no matter if you can't see it. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thy rod and thy staff, they bring us comfort. I feel like shouting hallelujah. But if I do that, my nephew would say, so what does that mean? And I'll have to go into another conversation. But here's a, here's a poem that makes that point. Alexa Genesis wrote, Sun is slowly rising, like a turtle walking. The air seems fresh, like it ne it's never been before. I was a loner, but that was before. I am glad that you were there with me, because it will be nightmare when I die alone. But I know you are there. As we wait in that moment of already and not yet, that moment of that disappointment and that hope, just know that in the lingering of that moment, God's unfailing and unflinching hope is waiting on you. I said I had two points, but I, you know what? I'm the one that's preaching the sermon today, not my notes. I think I'm done. It's just one point. The unflinching, unfailing hope that God has helps us to be on the move. So, I close. There's a, an African spiritual song that says, 
There is a balm in Gilead. You know it? To heal a sin-sick soul. I did catch that note, John. There is a balm in Gilead to heal the sin-sick soul. Let's do it once more. There is a balm in Gilead to heal the sin-sick soul. There is a balm in Gilead to make the wounded whole. The song goes on to say, Sometimes I feel discouraged and think I have lost my way. But then the hand of Jesus, but then the hand of Jesus, it is that hand that I claim and I bless this congregation with today. It is that hand of unfailing and unflinching hope that I give to you in your personal lives, in your communal lives, in our city lives, in our country lives, in the world's life. It is that hand that I for that hand will make the wounded whole. May it be so. Amen. Bless God at all times. We will bless God with our gifts to build up the faith and family circles. On behalf of St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church, we are so thrilled to have participated in John's baptism. Welcome. Let us now respond to God's mercy with grateful hearts, just as a psalmist waited for the Lord with hope, trusting in his unfailing love. We too are called to trust in God's provision and to give generously. At this time, you may present your offerings, and now I ask everyone to please stand for the doxology. <laughs> Let us pray. God of all generations, when we look back at our lives, we are grateful for your steadfast presence with us through uncertainty and upheaval. We have witnessed tragedy and courage, generosity and selfish, selflessness, resentment and resilience, fear and faithfulness. We bring our gifts to you knowing that you have given yourself for us. Bless these gifts. Teach us how to share our trust in you with the world around us in the days ahead. God of nations and neighbors, 
we look back over the past few months and we worry for the world. We have witnessed both conflict and compassion, deep differences and calls for collaboration. Send your spirit to guide our leaders in politics, education, healthcare, in business, labor, and community life. God of healing and hope, we look around at the world and worry about the unpredictable climate and its huge costs to communities and individuals. We look around and see people without doctors, people on long waiting lists for care, people without homes they can afford or food on the table. Hear us in this silence as we name in our hearts those people and situations that concerns us. God of family and friends, we look around at our lives and give you thanks for all our sustaining relationships, those nearby and those we maintain over distance. Where people live in loneliness, show us how to reach out. Where people struggle with differences, show us how to offer wisdom and courage. Inspire us with Jesus' all-embracing love and make us instruments of his peace. Gracious God, as we lift our prayers to you, we echo the psalmist's cry from the depth, trusting in your steadfast love and abundant mercy. In our waiting, we place our hope in you, knowing that with you there is forgiveness. Strengthen our faith, renew our spirits, and lead us in your ways. We rest in the assurance that you hear our cries and answer with compassion. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Bless God always. We will bless God when our partners with God destroys evil and the discouraged cries find hope. Let us now respond by singing our closing hymn, Lead On, O Cloud of Presence. Please stand.
go into this week, know that God is on the move. The unflinching and unfailing hope of God hears our cries. The blessing of God Almighty, the Creator, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with all of God's people, both now and always. Amen. I think we sing, or we say, oh, those are words. Okay, next slide. Oh. Wherever you
I just have one announcement to make. This, uh, the 1st of August, is, uh, I just want to remind you, is actually when John Charles is uh, assuming the music director's role. So it is great to have John uh, uh, with us uh, today, and as he was with us last week. But I'd forgot to, make, to remind you that John Charles is our music, new music director. So let us celebrate him. <laughs> 